Hello everybody. I hope everybody is doing fantastic and wonderful. And uh, this is my whatever Wednesday. So I'm going to just talk about um, whatever. And um, really, I think I'm going to start talking about uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild and how much I'm blown away by the game. I know that the Switch is really, really hard for people to obtain. But uh, what Nintendo did with the Breath of the Wild is just amazing. I'm, I I didn't rush to get the Switch. And when I finally got one, you know, I already had uh, bought Zelda from New Egg that I saw it on sale. So I think I bought it for like 40 something dollars. So my friend had told me, hey, Charles, you need to go ahead and play the game. But, you know, I had so much other stuff to do. And time is precious because you can't ever get back time. So I finally played uh, the Breath of the Wild. And I started playing the game, and I was amazed. First, I had never seen a Zelda game, or maybe any game that was so big. I thought Skyrim was like the epitome of just a huge world where you can run forever. And uh, I started playing Zelda, and man, just the sheer scope of it. Like from the beginning, I, I you know wandered around, trying to figure out what was going on, and um, start playing it, and then you realize. Ha ha ha! I get what they're doing. Uh, so people who play Dark Souls, I think uh, whoever designed Zelda kind of did the Dark Souls thing. They didn't give you any information, so you really don't know what you're doing. You just go here and there, and you get a couple of clues, but you really don't uh, know what you're doing. So the whole time is experimentation and trying to figure things out. And uh, next thing you know, man, I'm like, wow, this game uh, is different. So they give you a little tutorial. You go to these these different shrines, and you find these little uh, these little these gadgets that give you some type of power and uh, still they're not giving me any, any directions so I think for me to get through the tutorial it may have took me um, I want to say maybe a day maybe two I mean because <laughs> uh, normally I can be through a tutorial if, it's, if the game is not slowing me down I mean like 15-20 minutes and then I'm into the game but uh, Zelda just trying to figure out and, and experiment and learn how to play the game I think it maybe took me like two days to get to the beginning. And I thought it was a big, like, this is pretty big one. What's going on? Then I got to go beyond the wall. <laughs> I got to see. And man, uh, this is what you call suck your life away. Um, there is. Okay, so once you get past the tutorial, I guess you can just um, really just go straight to the boss and fight it. But uh, there's so much you need to know and so much to do. And you find yourself distracted playing a game. You start uh, just. Them, what's here? What's there? Everything, every little rock you see, every little mountain you, that you can get to, uh, is always some little secret right around the corner that you missed. Uh, so you, you find yourself backtracking or going into uh, doors and climbing trees and flipping rocks, and you get sidetracked from even playing a game because the world is so expansive, it's just like ridiculous. And you know, if one thing about a video game, you know, unlike real life, you know, if you fall, uh, you're not getting hurt in real life, you know. You, you might want to climb this hill, but uh, you know, or climb this, this this cliff. But as soon as you slip off, you know, yes, you your ass, and you're dead. When the video game, you can fall and you know, keep on going. So that that, that it insulates people and it lets people do things um, virtually that they can't do in all actuality. So, man, I just think that uh, you guys would love Zelda who who likes to play video games, but um, stay away from it because it's one of those. Uh, suck your life away games um, because it's interactive like me myself I find it hard to just go to a concert and observe it because I like to interact so I like dialogue I can't talk to um, uh, or I'm not in the midst of it it's hard for me so like just going to a, a, a party and sitting and watching people like and talk about nothing is never going to be fun for me but I can go to like uh, say a fight party because I'm in the boxing and I can get dialogue about boxing and people think we can have a dialogue. It's interesting. But just going to somebody's uh, house party or graduation and clapping and just watching and eating some food is like uh, so uh, what I would call so non-productive for me. I mean, I, I like to be productive. I want to do something. I want to be building something, or I want to um, see. Uh, some game from whatever activity I partake in. So, like, if I lift weights, I know I'm gonna get strong. Um, if I work out, you know, that's, it, I feel great. Um, I play a video game, I'm, I'm doing something, I make a video, um, something I created, and I can come back and observe and other people can partake in it. But uh, being a passive observer, like, 
I go to a concert or a comedy show, yeah, I can have fun and laugh, but the whole time I'm thinking, man, maybe I can do this. So I'm more, I want to, when I'm done, let's say I went to a comedy show or a concert, I really want to have a dialogue with whoever's performing and see if I can pick their brain. And I know that um, unless I know someone, that's not going to happen. And I'm not uh, in the, the situation where I can actually pay them for their time to, to learn from them. So it's, sometimes it's best for me not even to partake in those type of particular activities because I'm going to feel... Um, I'm going to feel like I just wasted time and I spent money on something that other than for entertainment purposes was not productive and I didn't improve me as a person. That's probably uh, my problem. Uh, yeah, I think that. So anyway, I, I, if you can obtain a switch, I would say go ahead and get one because it is pretty awesome. I'm really, really impressed by the whole device because it's the first real, really, truly uh, portable platform that I've seen. With I mean. I guess maybe some cell phones can compete, but it's the way they, they designed it. They designed it uh, to make it just like, okay, take it with you wherever you go and you stick it right into your TV and you're, you're good to go. And you can actually even travel. Like, it's not bulky like a, a PS4 or Xbox. And I'm not saying the graphics are on that same level, but if it can play Skyrim, which you can, uh, man, it's doing pretty good. I don't think my uh, cell phone is powerful enough to play Skyrim, at least not yet. And um, I, I like the, the way that they, 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 they did the controls, the motion controls, everything. It's just, it's just great. And it's just, it, it kind of, other than the gimmicky games they're going to make for the 3DS, um, I, it kind of makes it obsolete. I'd rather just play those games on Zelda. I'd rather just, instead of having two screens, I'd rather just press the start button or plus button or the minus button and go to the menu and go back to the game. That makes it so awesome. I just think they did an awesome job. I'm not trying to sell the Switch. Um, if, if I was rich enough to get one and give it to all my friends, I probably would. Especially if they had kids, because it's going—it's going to be that bonding experience. Other than you know going out to a park and playing basketball or going hiking or camping with your children, uh, it is really quite awesome. Um, whew, man, um, uh, what else I could say? Uh, also, I guess I'm just going to. This is my whatever Wednesday. Let me go wherever. I'm going to delve into uh, Star Wars and um, the Last Jedi is coming, and this is a pivotal movie for me. Um, because um, I wasn't that impressed by The Force Awakens. And I'm sorry to say, it's just the way, it was a rehash. They rehashed the, uh, the, the, the New Hope, and they they didn't take um, the heroine through a crucible. She didn't have, she started off all powerful. And um, I can be, in my critique, a little bit hard on Ray because, um, I would look at like Luke and I look at like Anakin and I say um, both of them had to put in some hard work uh, and they both took losses before they became powerful. But Ray from the get go, she never uh, faced a failure moment. I mean, the the like she defeated Kylo Ren who could stop a uh, blaster bolts from his mind and talk to you like it's nothing. And even after being wounded, uh, she still she defeated him. And I mean, there's much more I can get into it, but it, it, you know, it it, it didn't. Whenever I see a movie, especially in a series, I want you to bring something to the story. I want you to add something new. I don't want the same rehash. And if you're going to bring in a different character, um, I want it to, to make me really want to know more. I, I still want to know more about it, but it's like, okay, I mean, me and my friends, we've talked about uh, uh, Rogue One. And me, particularly, I, I love the movie. Some people, um, they, they, didn't, they didn't like it. And, uh, well, for me, it added, it added a lot to the Star Wars story. How the Death Star came to be, how come nobody uh, heard about it, that it was out there, and then how they got the information to get to the New Hope. That was great. Um, so many people really want to be um, invested into the character, and um, whatever her name was, the, the, the heroine Jane, whatever Ursula, whatever her name was. Um, to me, she was, she was, she she was not necessary. Like it's a it's, she's, it's just a coincidence that she's involved in it because her father happened to uh, reveal the weakness in the, the Death Star. But overall, she is not pivotal. You, like, what happened to her other than her connection to get the, um, get the rebellion to the information? Yeah, that's what I think was great about Rogue One. Rogue One was really about their, um, um, was really about even though the re rebellion is good, it's gonna be uh, it's, it's it's great um, because 
like like the guy said, you know, I've been doing this all my life. Now that your father has died, or now that it's affecting you, you want to be involved, and you're going to judge my actions, but you don't know what most people have to sacrifice to get here, and everything we do is not going to be good to to make a change. And that's probably why I liked um, World War because uh, it was great. It wasn't a, a beautiful ending. Everybody died. Um, I don't care about I'm probably ruining for you people, but uh, and you know, I, I like the depth, the Darth Vader scene. I never seen a. Uh, somebody, a force user, goes so galactic like Darth Vader did in uh, Rogue One. Where if you go back to uh, the fan, whatever call it, uh, the Force Awakens, uh, like, no matter how I look at the movie, I don't feel like it brought anything new to the table. Or you, know, you got another force user, or she's connected to Luke. So, but I, it, it was like it's kind of. Um, I'm gonna have to get into this. It's kind of like. Uh, Alien Covenant to me. Like, you didn't really add anything. You did a little bit of story, you added, uh, it, okay, I, well, ooh, I'm so I, I really want to delve into it. So, um, with um, The Last Jedi coming out, hopefully they'll move the story. Um, so, I want to be involved. Um, it's kind of like how I feel about um, Rebels. Um, yeah, well, at least the, the story is about family and emotional um, connections and how the rebellion came into being. That's why I can follow it. But um, I'm not really uh, like somebody I know. You uh, want asked me what I feel about uh, season four, and um, uh, I just want to know how I connected to Rogue One. I mean, I, other than that, I don't. I, I, it, you can tell me about the Bindu and all that other stuff, but I really, uh, I don't feel like it hasn't added anything that I really say. Well, I needed to see it. Like I saw Clone Wars, and that 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 was kind of cool. It told me how Jack, like, uh, more about how Anakin, his thought process, you know, I want you to move the story. So if it's just filler, like, you know, Dragon Ball Z is great, but filler, I'm going to skip it, man. I don't need filler. I need information. So to each their own. Uh, hopefully it's great, and I feel like I need to go back and, and watch it. I'll try to watch it when it comes out because I, I like to see it, but um, I'm, I'm going all over the place on whatever Wednesdays. So I'll tell you this, man. I really... Uh, uh, the switch is awesome. I think it is it's a great device. I stay away from it unless you want to give us some time. But then again, again, it's probably a great investment because uh, if you're trying to save money, uh, other than electricity, it'll stop you from uh, going out and spending money on doing stuff unless you like just to work out and run and hike. But you mean like you can like, <laughs> get a drive somewhere and gas or time. So, all right, uh, I'm done with my rambling. I'm probably not saying nothing great. Hope everybody enjoys themselves. Um, I'm just having fun, like always, enjoying life. I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy to see uh, people. Um, I wish there was more time in the day. Uh, you say nothing, but sometimes you need a video saying nothing, talking about nothing, just rambling about stuff that's kind of intriguing and interesting so other people can partake in your love. All right, take care. Love yourself. Play Zelda. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Man, I hope they come out with, uh, what do they call it, uh, other Zelda games you can download to the Switch, and that's going to just make it complete and you can get rid of all the old systems you're holding on to, like me, you know, holding on to my uh, uh, Nintendo 64 and to my GameCube. And, you know, I just want to uh, consolidate. I want to be more concise. I want to get rid of uh, what they call that minimalist. I want to be more small. I mean, it's so hard. I got so much nonsense. All right, take care.